Hello everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie and I create mosaics using sea glass. And today I'm going to talk to you about how I'm going to complete this very large sea glass mosaic that was inspired by Van Gogh's The Starry Night. So if you joined me for my last video, which was on how to create a night sky, you would have heard me talk about Van Gogh and how much I'm inspired by him and by his story, and in particular by his painting, The Starry Night. I just love that painting. And I really wanted to recreate the feeling that he got of the night sky and the dark village down below. And I was really inspired to create it in a way that it looked through a window because he painted that image based on the view through his window of the asylum where he was at the time when he did the painting. So in my last video, I showed you the process I used to create that night sky and have the really dynamic lines with the white and the green sea glass. And if you want to hear more about what I had to say about Van Gogh and about the whole process for creating the night sky, you can click on the icon up above and it will take you to that video. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you my whole process for creating the dark village that's down below. So I'm going to complete the tree, put in the village, finish in the rest of the sky, and I'll show you that process as we go. So let's get started on that process. So to start my night village, one of the things that stands out to me the most is this steeple of a church. And I found this really cool aqua piece that I have that I'm going to put there. One thing I do have here is I really like black stones and ones that come out kind of square are really cool. This one here, you may not be able to tell on the video, but it's got a bit of a shiny sparkle to it. And where I want things really dark in the bottom, where it is a nighttime scene, I'm going to use some of my black stones. So some dark browns and some black stones will be really cool. And this one's really sparkly. And some of these triangular shaped ones I think will make some really cool roofs as well. Roofs. Roofs. However, do you, however you say roof. My maritime accent is coming through there, isn't it? I've picked out a bunch of square brown ones that I think will be really cool. So I think I'll just dump all these on. And I know that I'm going to use these to create buildings because it is a village. The other thing that I'll figure out as I'm going is whether or not some of these might work. So these are my pottery pieces that to me look kind of like a roof. But I'll put a bunch of things in place and then make some decisions about what I'm going to include and what I'm not. So the other thing that I want to do here is fill in the rest of my tree as well. So I have the tree started up here at the top and I have the outline here of the tree and here as well. So I want the contrast of the flowing lines of the tree with the square buildings to really stand out. So in doing the top of the tree, I wanted to use really small pieces because it sort of will give you that feeling of the tree flowing up into the sky at night. Whereas in the bottom, I really am looking for some nice big chunky brown pieces so that it really adds some weight to the bottom of your piece. So the first thing I did for completing the bottom part of this piece was to fill in all the brown for this tree. And I just have it, I connected it up with the top part of the tree and worked my way down, filled in some big pieces towards the bottom. And I just find with all the different shades of brown, it can add so much interest to a tree. It just gives you a whole lot of texture and dimension in the tree. So I'm fairly pleased with my tree. And I also filled in some bottom pieces here. Just kind of interesting, because I thought this is a really large piece, so I'd like to put in some really interesting sea glass pieces. So I put some of my bottle tops at the bottom there. They could be like bales of hay or something out in the field. And I have a dark horizon line here, which I plan to continue along here. But the first thing I'm going to do before I finish filling in the rest of the background is the village. One thing that I find really interesting about sea glass is that it doesn't tend to come in square or rectangular shapes. It tends to come primarily in organic or broken shapes. 
So in uh, whenever I see something that's kind of square or looks like it's an actual shape, I find it really interesting. So for this piece, I've grabbed a bunch of my pieces of sea glass that to me look a little bit squarer. And I'm going to use those to create the feeling of a village. Just because I think the square pieces are going to look a little bit more structural, like a town. So trying to get a little bit away from the organic feel of sea glass and get more into a structural feel, I'm going to use a bunch of my squarish pieces and then triangular pieces for the roof. Keeping in mind that this doesn't have to be really accurate because it's nighttime. So things are just going to be looking kind of blurry and shapeless because it is dark. So I finished filling in the village and my goal wasn't to make it look really clear cut as a village because it is at night and things don't tend to stand out very clearly at night. But you can see the church and there's a few little buildings here. And I thought if I filled the background in with green like a hedge of trees in behind the village that it would help it stand out a little bit more. And now I'm planning to get these mountains in the background all done in brown before I finish filling in the sky area. So I have the green area filled in here to create the trees in back of the village. And so I've started this mountain range off in the distance over here. So I'm going to continue on following these lines I made in my pattern to get this mountain range. But in this area right here, so I'm going to be working with my brown for this, but this area right here I want to do uh, kind of like a field type of thing with all sorts of brown bottle tops that will look kind of neat just to create a bit more dimension in this area. So what I have here as well, I'm thinking if I vary the size of the sea glass pieces it's going to help differentiate different mountains. So this mountain here is made with big chunky browns so you can kind of see that's going to be a bit different whereas in here I'm picking some tiny little ones. I'll probably even take out some of those bigger ones there. Just use tiny little browns in here so it'll look like a different mountain and I'll continue those tiny little ones over here and maybe make them a little bit bigger over a bit further. And the same over here. I'll have a few big ones but then I'll just kind of grab a bunch of my small brown ones and put them in here. I'll just set them here for now and then I'll arrange them. I think it'll make this mountain range look different than this one. Also I have to be careful that this is going to look different than the tree so I'll probably use really tiny ones next to the tree so you can see that there's a bit of a break there. Get some so here I'm going to get some more tiny little ones and fill them in. So I have my mountains in behind the village all finished up and I think that looks good. So the next thing that I want to do, I want to put a layer of white. I'm not going to use big pieces for this, just kind of small pieces. But I want to have a little white at the top of the mountains. And that's going to represent the light coming from the neighboring village. Because you know how it is at night, sometimes when you have mountains on a bright night, even though this is a night sky, it's kind of a bright night so you can see a fair amount of stuff. So sometimes you'll see lights from a neighboring village that will be shining through up above the mountains. So the other thing that I want to do is I want to continue on with the lines from the top of the piece. I want to make sure that my lines that I have happening at the top don't just end right there at that pane. You want them to carry on. So like here I've got a big chunky white going so I know I want to carry on the theme of that big chunky line there. So I'll have to be careful about the pieces that I choose and where I place them so that there isn't a break there. And then below that I'm going to be filling in with green. So I'm just going to place a bunch of green down where I want all this green to be just so that I can make sure it's going to give me the effect that I want. Need a few whites in here to finish this circle here.
So I know I want green all along here. So I'll just place a few there for to get me started. So I just wanted to show you here how you can really give yourself a little bit more guidance at this stage of doing a piece just by placing a bunch of pieces there. And you haven't got them all fit in place yet, but it helps fill it in a bit to give you a sense of, is this the effect that I want? And then once I have an idea of what colors I want there, then I can pick out the exact shape that is going to fit into each little space. There, I think that gives me a pretty good idea of where I'm going with the last bit in this piece. So I finished this pane of glass here and you'll see I put white along the horizon and I started a little white strip here that continued over into this pane of glass. And in this section I thought it would be interesting to do a swirl of green so I started in the middle and then I just did this swirl of green all the way around. And I just think it adds a little bit of interest to that section of the sky. And over here, just to keep in mind, when you're working with a window that has the breaks in the panes of glass, if you're doing a stream of glass like this, got to carry it on into the next frame. Same here, I've got this stream of white here that ends right here. And I'm starting another one here that I'm going to continue on into this pane of glass. So I got those last sections filled in and my night sky and my village are all finished. So this is my completed piece based on Van Gogh's Starry Night and I'm quite pleased with it. It's a really big project for me and um, I like doing big projects but this one in particular has been a lot of fun for me. It's taken me a lot of time and a lot more sea glass than most of my other projects but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes taking on a big project can really be exciting and seeing the end result here is quite exciting for me. Just give you a little bit of close-up in each pane of glass so you can see some of the details. You can see the top of my tree there and some of the flowing lines and the secondary patterns within the green. You can see the white really stands out but the green is kind of neat too and those stars with all the pieces set on end. You can see more on the creation of my night sky in my part one of this video. And then there's the village. If I zoom in there you can see some of the details on the buildings and the mountains and the fields in behind the village. You can see the church there. I love the way that steeple reaches out into the sky. So there, that's the completed piece. I hope this has been really inspiring for you and it encourages you to dive right in and do a, a sea glass mosaic and maybe even a really large sea glass mosaic. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. And until next time, happy sea glass hunting.